All right, just wanted to add to that video one more thing. Again, we used the potential energy equation, the kinetic energy equation, to find the potential and kinetic energy of all of these points. Uh, it was easy to find potential energy because we always know the height, and the total energy remains constant. We found that from the first part, and subtracting that because these two must equal that, we figured out the kinetic energies, and then using the kinetic energy, we figured out how to find what the velocity is. Now, I want to give you guys a heads up that sometimes you might get this question without this information. No mess. You might say, whoa, 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 hang on a second. How am I going to figure out the energy without the mass? And it's true, you can't. You can't figure out the energy without the mass. But if the question was not asking you for energies, and it was asking you for just the velocities, then your energy values would be wrong, but your velocity values won't. And the reason is mass doesn't matter in these equations. You can take it out. So if I first start off with my initial energy being one half mv initial squared plus one half mgh initial is equal to one half mvrf squared plus one half mgh final, that's just saying initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy is going to equal to final kinetic energy plus final potential energy. Just initial energy equals final energy. That's all we're saying here. But what's interesting to see is that I could just make mass cancel out of all these equations. Um, there's no one half here. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so one half mv squared, which is your kinetic energy plus your potential energy initial, and your kinetic energy final plus your potential energy final. So you can see that the m's cancel out of this equation. Pop, 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 pop. And you're actually left with vi squared over 2 plus ghi is equal to 1 half, or vf squared over 2, let's write it that way, just like you wrote this one, plus gh final. And so using that, you could figure these things out the same way. Uh, and uh, it's just easier to do it this way. And so again, let me explain to you what would happen if they gave you a question like this, how would you proceed? Well, since you see that mass doesn't matter, you can make up your own mass, all right? So you just say, I wanna say mass is equal to, what should we make? An easy number, right? Make sense? So how about we make mass one kg? And so you can do this whole thing over again with one kg. And what will happen is you will still, you'll get different energy values, of course, because it'll be all of these same numbers divided by 500. And you can easily figure that out, or I could just kind of, you know, recompute it all. But these values will remain the same. Okay, so that'd be a good exercise for you kids to do. And so anytime you come up with a question where they don't give you the, the uh, mass, and they're not asking for energy, they're asking final velocity, just let the mass equal to 1 kg. And that will solve the same thing. Uh, you know, if you were doing it over here, uh, for example, so it would be 50 times 9.8 times 1, you know, that would be your um, thing, and you still end up with the same answers, okay? So just use 1 kilogram, you could use 10, you could use 20, you could use 500 and you get these actual values, okay? So that's just something I wanted to add. So for when you don't have mass, what is it that you can do? All right. We'll see you again next class.